Hello. Uh, great to be here. Um, so I'm going to be fast. Um, I want to talk about what do we do in a world where machines help us make more decisions, but people like me as journalists are in the position of trying to hold those machines accountable. And I want to tell you about an investigation I recently did into an algorithm. To tell The reason to tell this story is to show how difficult it is to hold an algorithm accountable and how we don't yet have a shared understanding of what is success and harm and how to measure Im disparate impact of an algorithm. So I'm going to start with um, an algorithm used across the country to assess whether criminals are likely to commit a future crime. At the time of arrest, um, uh, Brisha on the right was given an assessment of a uh, high risk of future offending. and um, Vernon on the left was given a risk of three, low risk of future offending. This is in Fort Lauderdale. They had both been arrested for petty theft. Um, anecdotally, it looks like this algorithm was completely wrong. Um, Brisha had four prior juvenile offenses, misdemeanors, and did not go on to commit a future crime in the next two years. Vernon had actually already served a five-year term for armed robbery and um, went on to commit a grand theft and is currently serving a nine-year prison sentence. So in this particular case, you might say, okay, anecdotally, this algorithm's whacked, but journalism doesn't happen that way anymore. I used to be able 10, 15 years ago, I could write a story off based on one anecdote. No longer. Uh, so I uh, went to Fort Lauderdale, and I asked them for all the risk scores assigned to criminals arrested in 2013 and 2014. Um, it took five months in a legal battle, because FOIA is uh, a great law, but still hard to enforce. But I did get 18,000 criminal records. So the first thing it did is threw them in a chart. And I'll show you that the chart on the right here is white defendants. And those are scores 1 through 10, low risk. So the first thing you notice is that white defendants are getting a disproportionate share of low risk scores. And black defendants are getting a pretty even distribution of scores. However, once we looked at this chart, we were like, that looks disparate. But the fact is, what if everyone on those low risk scores and the white defendants is basically Mother Teresa, right? They've never committed a crime, they're not gonna go on to commit another crime. So we faced the sad realization that we were not done and we had to spend six months scraping this website uh, to obtain the criminal records of every single one of those 18,000 defendants. Um, after downloading 80,000 records, which I think believe is probably a violation of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, um, <laughs> we uh, were able to match all of those people with their prior criminal histories and their future criminal acts. And what we found was we were able to do a very robust statistical analysis, a logistic regression, which showed that if you corrected for those factors that um, we knew of, which were age, gender, prior crimes, and future recidivism, blacks were still being scored at 45% more likely to get a higher score. Um, and so that was when we realized, okay, this is actually truly disparate impact. What does it look like on the ground? What it looks like on the ground is really the difference between a false positive rate and a false negative rate. So the false positive rate for black defendants was twice the rate of white defendants. And the false negative rate for white defendants was twice that of black defendants. Meaning, if you're black and you're going to get a wrong score, you're twice as likely to get the score being wrong on the high direction. And if you're white and you're likely to get a wrong score, um, you're twice as likely to be scored low risk incorrectly. Uh, so the thing that's interesting about this is this um, belies the fact that overall, overall the success rate for this algorithm is 60% for both black and white defendants. So what that means is that actually it's wrong about the same amount of time for both, but it's wrong in different directions. And what's interesting about this field of criminal risk assessments is almost every uh, tool that we saw, and there are dozens of these tools used across the country at every stage from pretrial to sentencing to parole, almost every one of the validation papers only looks at this outcome, success rates. And they say, we have the same success rate for black and white defendants, and they call it a day. And the question that I, we are raising in our research, which is being hotly debated right now in the field of criminal risk assessments is, shouldn't we also look at failure rates? And so I think I wanna just leave you with this question of how should we analyze our algorithms? I'm just one person trying to do it as a journalist, but I think we all need to have a shared understanding of what is the way to assess them. And I would invite you to take a look at our story. We put up all of the data, you can analyze it to your heart's content and our 15-page white paper, and thank you for listening. Wow.